Hey guys, and welcome back again. Today, we're gonna to be looking at polyesters. So I've got the Molly Mod kits here, and I'm gonna mess them out with these and hope we make it a little bit more visual for you so you can see exactly what's going on when we're making these ester links. Now, I've not put the hydrogens on these because you can get a little bit busy there, so the chain is a bit hydrogenless, but I suppose that it matches the uh, version of displayed and skeletal that I've kind of mixed together at the top. So, what have I got? I've got a diol just here, there it is. And I've got a di carboxylic acid like that as well. So this is ethane 1,2-diol, and this is propane 1,3-dioic acid. So I've got those structures, and what's going to happen is, brace yourselves, they're going to react together. Now, just like other ester work that we do on the A-level, this is going to be an alcohol group and a carboxylic acid group to make an ester. And just like an esterification reaction, we're going to release a molecule of water for this. But specifically, I want to make down here the repeating unit of a polymer that would be formed if these two reacted together. And the repeating unit is going to allow me to see that this is a polyester, and a polyester is two molecules reacting together to form a larger polymer with the elimination of a small molecule of H2O in this case. So let's have a look at how we do that. So I need to take my two molecules, and I'm going to make the link between them first. So I'm going to take off the OH from the alcohol, and I'm going to take off the H from the carboxylic acid. And then those two are going to clip together just here and make my ester link. Now don't worry at A level about where the OH actually comes from and is removed on. The point is that a molecule of water was kicked out, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Now here then, so we can map this downwards and see exactly what we've just done, we don't need to worry about where the OH and where the H comes from. Is the OH from here and the H from there, or the OH from here and the H from there? Don't worry about that. So I'm saying it quite quickly. What we need to focus on is what have I just made. So I took out some H2O, and what I've got is this carbon just here, double bonded to an oxygen still. That came from my carboxylic acid. So that's actually specifically that carbon just there. And that is now bonded to an oxygen, and the oxygen is now linked through onto this side, so these two carbons are these two just here, like that. And I can show these H's on now just for a little bit of clarity. So it's those two, there they are. So we can show them in just there, that's these two. And on this side then, I've currently still got my OH here, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get rid of part of this in a minute, and I'll explain why, but I'm just gonna leave the O there for a moment. Going on this side, I've got my carbon, which is in the middle just here, which I'll put my H's on. And at the moment, just like on the other side, I've got part of a functional group shown intact here, but I am gonna sort of leave that and come back to it in a moment. For my polyester, what I need to make sure is my repeating unit has a structure at either end that would allow it, if I close the link like that, that would allow it to form another ester link around the outside. So what I need to do is I leave my oxygen here like so, and I take the OH from this side, so I can match my notation. And then if I was to close that round, if I needed to, that would create just here another ester link. The way I draw this now then in my repeating unit is I show the arms sticking out from that last atom. And the arms here of this one, like so. Now remember for polymerization equations, just like addition polymerization in AS, we're using ends in front just here and an N on the outside. Now you can see here what we've done a couple of times there is create molecules of water. And the way that we show that nicely for the exam, to make it nice and clear how many we make, and this is really just for OCR, we use 2N minus 1 H2O on this side. The main focus of the exam is going to be taking the polymer out to the two monomers or showing the repeating unit of the polymer and so on. But if you ever do need to write the equation, this is how we represent where the water goes on this side. Now, is there a version of this which looks a little bit different? Absolutely, of course there is. It's chemistry. There's always going to be a version of things that look a little bit different. And what we're going to do for the next one is we're going to have a look at an example of a polyester, just like this one here, but it's made from one monomer instead of two. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're going to be looking at an example like this molecule just here, which is 3-hydroxypropanoic acid. We can see at this end we've got a normal carboxylic acid group, and then at this end here, I've got an alcohol group. Now, this particular monomer is going to make a polymer, polyester, just like the one up here, but it has a slight difference, and we'll be able to spot that by looking at the two repeating unit structures side by side. So first off then, I'm gonna draw this molecule in. So I've got my C double bond O and my OH just there. So that's the carboxylic acid group. 
I go down my chain just here. So one, two, so that's those two carbons just here, drawn by the two corners there. And I've got my OH down this end like that. And so what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna remove a small molecule of water. So just the same as before, I'm gonna take say the H from this end and I'm gonna take, it's like a whole thing actually, yeah, let's just go for it. So I take the OH from this end just here and I take the H from this end like that. Don't worry too much about where exactly the OH and H come from. The important thing is you are kicking out a molecule of water. There it is, kicked. And you need to make sure that you're showing consistency with how you draw the two ends here from one diagram to the next. So that's why I've made sure that I've got the carbon sticking out just here and I've got the oxygen just there. So N of that is going to create on this side, I only need that one monomer, remember? On this side just here, bracket up, I'm gonna have my carbon just here, double bonded to the oxygen. There's my next carbon up. And then I've got this carbon just here, which is bonded to the oxygen, which, move water, goes off to the edge just like that, and N on the outside, and I can show my H's in here for a little bit more clarity. There we go. So you can see here, just to make sense of this, I've got the carbon just there, I've got the oxygen at the top, I've got my two carbons here, there they are, and I've got my oxygen sticking out the end just there. Now that is my repeating unit, there it is. Draw nice and clearly. Now, the other thing that changes before we go into this, but just wanna put this in before I forget, is instead of putting two N minus one, we put N minus one H2O just in there instead. But my main focus here is how would I be able to spot from one repeating unit to another that this one was made from two monomers and this one was only made from one? Well, look at the sort of the middle of this one. There was an ester link shown in the middle. By closing up the molecule, we could create an ester link, but also there was one shown in the middle. For this one here, if I was to close up the molecule, I could make the ester link, but there was no ester link shown in the middle. And so that's a way of spotting that this was made from one monomer, whereas this one was made from two. It's a nice, easy way of doing it. Now, that idea as well of closing up the molecule can actually lead to one of the biggest problems we have with creating a polyester. Instead of creating a polymer, you can actually create a molecule. So let's have a look at that now in a final set of examples. Okay, so final thing we're gonna be looking at just here, we've got our molecule here of hydroxy acid. So this one's got a slightly longer chain so that what I can do next will make a little bit more sense. But we're looking at is a but chain just here because it's four carbons long. So this is gonna be four hydroxy butanoic acid. Now, I said that what could actually happen is instead of making a polymer, we could end up making a molecule. And that's because, remember, what we could just end up making is a bog standard ester. Well, not bog standard, a little bit different, I suppose. And if I start repositioning the molecule, you can kind of get a clue for what might end up happening. What can actually happen is the carboxylic acid end and the alcohol end could actually react together and form an ester link. And so the molecule folds in on itself, just like I showed here, and forms not quite a cyclic structure, but it forms a structure whereby we have an ester loop just like there. And so let's just unfold this over again so we can write this out and you can see exactly how this is going to look if we draw the formula for it. So if I take one of these structures, so let's draw it exactly as it appears on here, so you can track exactly what I'm doing with it. Like that. A reassuring noise this pen makes. There we go, like so. And what I'm literally gonna do is I'm gonna fold this up like that, take off the water molecule. So there goes my water. And what I've created here by connecting together, and I'll put the little stars on it, this carbon connects to that oxygen, I've created this cyclic structure. And so, well, almost cyclic, it's a ring, but it's got this ester link in it, so it looks a little bit different from a normal uh, cyclic, like an alicyclic structure, for example. And so here, what I'm drawing out now, is the cyclic structure. I keep saying that, and I know it's not. It's got this ester link and it is, it is a ring structure, but I don't want to call it cyclic because I don't want to contradict all the other work that you do. 
on alicyclic structures. So I'm gonna try and avoid saying it, but you get what I mean. I'm saying that we've got this ring feature just here with this ester link inside it. And there it is. What a really weird molecule. Now, the other thing that could happen is, rather than just one folding in on itself, you could actually have two reacting together and sort of hugging. And so this version is kind of like if you had a carboxylic acid group here and an alcohol group here, it's like that closing in on itself like that. Whereas what I'm suggesting now is if I had two of them side by side, it'd be like them linking up that way like that. So let's have a quick look at how the Molly mod for that would look. Okay, so for this last example, what we can see is I've got my molecule at the top here, four carbons in total, four carbons at the bottom here. I've got my carboxylic acid group, my alcohol group, carboxylic acid group, an alcohol group. And the gist is what could happen is in the last example, we saw that it closed in on itself. In the polymerization, we saw that we made a repeating unit over and over. What could happen here is the two molecules form a big ring-like structure here by forming two different ester links. So we see an ester link on this side form up. There it is, kicking out one molecule of water that end. And we see an ester link on this side form up, kicking out a molecule of water on that end as well. So I've got this weird looking structure just here like that. So I can actually draw this out to help it make a bit of sense in the same way we've just made it. So I've got my four carbon chain like that with my carboxylic acid at this end, one, two, three, four down here to make my alcohol just there. I need two of that. And what I'm forming is this molecule to make sure this is really clear. I've got my zigzag at the top just there, going down to my oxygen to give me my functional group carbon. In fact, I'm gonna draw this functional group out now so you can see that nice and clearly just there. And this is going down here and it's gonna go in, just like we can see these two pinched in the middle just there, over to this side, then to the oxygen, just here like that, up in this direction so we can see this one goes up and down just there like that, through to this carbon which would have the functional group. And so you can see the chains, we've got one, two, three, four. So that'd be one, two, three, four. Oxygen, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oxygen on this end as well. And because this is the molecule, you'd have two H2O. In the previous example, you just have one H2O. We obviously don't use the N here whatsoever because we know how many molecules we're using. So we don't need that N whatsoever. I hope that gives you some clarity on what can actually end up happening when you use a dioic acid or a diol or a hydroxy acid to try and make a polyester and how this can actually end up looking. I'll leave you to the rest of all the work that we're doing on the channel. Until next time, happy revising.